God in this great country, Lord God. And Father, we do want to pray for our, our veterans, Lord God. We continue to pray, Lord God, that, that you be with each and every one of them, Lord God. Give them, Lord God, the resources that they need, Father. Father, we continue to pray for our military, Lord, our law enforcement officers, Lord God, our first responders, Lord God. We just thank you for these people, Lord God, that are on the, the front line, Lord God, uh, fighting, Lord God, for, for this country, Lord God, fighting for the people, Lord God, serving the people, Lord God. Father, we do thank you for the leaders, Lord God, that you have placed uh, in authority, Lord God, the president, Lord God, his staff, Lord God, uh, the governors, Lord God, everyone, Lord God, in a uh, serving role, Lord. We just thank you for these people, Lord. And we ask that you continue to give us all wisdom and understanding, Lord God, as we try to uh, help, Lord God, direct the, the, the affairs of the people, Lord God, and make the right decisions, Lord. Father, we do thank you for, Lord God, everyone that's in this building today. We pray for their families. Lord, we pray for this, this community. We just thank you for Gulf County. Bless the people in Gulf County. Bless this board, Lord. And, Father, we just want to thank you for your grace and mercy. We give you praise, glory, and honor. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, good morning to everyone. August 27th, Board of County Commission meeting. We just want to welcome you. i um, like to take this time to, uh, just to let everyone know at the end of the meeting, if you would like to come before the board, uh, there's a set time set aside. And if you would like to come before the board with uh, any questions or concerns, I ask that you please fill out the form that's located behind Mr. Whitfield sitting on that on that slash bench. Um, please make sure you fill it out. Remember, if you, uh, as an individual, you have three minutes. If you're representing a group, you have uh, five minutes. Um, and just a reminder that Gulf County does have a speaking um, ordinance. Uh, if anybody comes before the board, when you, whenever you come up, just please make sure you state your name and who you represent and your address for the record, please. Uh, at this time, we'll move right into the consent agenda. This is where one vote covers uh, multiple items in the consent agenda. Uh, is there anyone in the public or audience who has who has any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Anyone in the public? If there being none, is there anyone on staff who has any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? All right. Is there any board members with any questions or concerns with any with the anything in the consent agenda? All right, there being none, I entertain a motion that we accept the consent agenda. So move as presented. All right, motion by Commissioner McDane. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? Any opposition to that motion? All right, motion passes. Five and zero. Oh. All right, moving right on down to county staff business. Uh, Mr. Hammond, Mr. Uh, your handout on number one, recommendation from the chairman. We have a vacancy on the planning development <coughs> review board and recommend Mr. Butler be appointed to that position. All right, I entertain a motion that we accept that. Uh, so move, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion by Commissioner Rich. Second, Mr. Chairman. All right, second by Commissioner Rogers. Any uh, any further board discussion on this uh, PD, uh, PDRB appointment? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right, any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5-0. Page 2, uh, requesting to have a four o'clock special meeting on Thursday before your budget meeting at 501 next week we, we need to talk about a bunch of things one you need to make a final decision on how I say we final decision if you're ready to make a final decision we need to we need to have a plan to go forward uh, <clears throat> on spending that money and setting the caps and and uh, deciding how you want to move forward uh, I've been contacted with ARPC Lynn and, and Joe Paul are out of town this week at the housing conference so they're going to get some good information, hopefully, there. Uh, ARPC has reached out. They're willing to discuss either assisting or even potentially even taking over the entire uh, HHRP project. Uh, again, it's something that, that we could look at. Uh, it could be paid for out of the grant, but 
again, when Joe Paul and Lynn get back, we'll get a game plan and, and then make a presentation to the board and then y'all decide how we're going to move forward on this. Okay. Right. If that's a good time, we'll I'll let the chairman we'll call that. that. We'll go at 4 o'clock on the Thursday, September the 5th. That's what I'm <coughs> We're good with that. All right. Uh, got a, a uh, request from Joe Paul to reject bid 18-19-41 and to go out for rebid on these items. Uh, they believe they can get better prices with some more information. So the recommendation that they, we reject and rebid. What the bid was on? Uh, this was the modular uh, and mobile home package. Um, and it ranged from the low of 39, 350 to a high of 143, 350. Okay. All right. I entertain a motion that we reject this bid. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion mm -hmm. by Commissioner McCrone. Second, Second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on these rejection of these bids? All right. Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to that motion? Yeah, and re-advertise. I'm sorry. Okay. That was, it was a both reject and re-advertise. Yes, sir. Okay. You good with that, Mr. McCrone? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Any opposition to that motion? Motion passes. Five and The last thing I have right now, Mr. Chairman, is uh, the Beacon Hill Park Committee has got a request. I think Mr. Butler has that. Yes, sir. Hold on up, Mr. Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, representing the <clears throat> Veteran Park at Beacon Hill, we have been working on specs on putting flagpole foundations, walkways, monuments, fencing, and what we requesting the board to do today is simply go out to bid and see what the big number is going to be. Uh, at the end of the day, you can always reject bids that come in high. Okay. We try and count our money, and uh, if the board will agree to go out for advertising. And we'll take bids in about maybe about a month. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. I entertain the motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right. Motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Rogers. Second by Commissioner Crone. Any further board discussion on this? All right. Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? Any opposition to that motion? Motion passes. Five and zero. Oh. And it is my understanding now, unless something's changed, that our commitment was $100,000 towards this project. We've already put up the first 50, and uh, we're waiting the second 50 uh, when they get ready. But, but, but this will be, they will be adding to this pot for whatever they advertise for. Okay. That's all I have at this time, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Novak. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, I have one item right now. There's several others on the agenda later on, but uh, under legal this morning, the last week I had updated you on potential resolution of uh, case 2018-81. It's Christy McElroy, Robert Branch, Cindy Branch, Fred Morris, Claire Morris, Art Rogers, Elaine Rogers, Stephen Hiller, Daniel Doty, Joyce Doty, and John Fadio versus the city of Port St. Joe and Gulf County, Florida. Um, the litigation is a little less than a year old, um, and going back and forth with the plaintiff's counsel, we believe we have a stipulation for the voluntary dismissal of the lawsuit from the plaintiffs. And I'll read the pertinent parts to the commissioners. Um, I've discussed it with the administration and each of you commissioners individually uh, since last week, and where we're at right now, it reads as follows. The plaintiffs, as I just named, hereby stipulate to the voluntary dismissal of the above captioned lawsuit, and I emphasize with prejudice, subject to the foregoing terms. Numbers one and two are with regards to the city and the counts against the city uh, that they comply with Florida Statute 17063 in the development of their properties as they move forward on the city park. Uh, paragraph three is the only one that applies to the county. Um, the county had filed motions to dismiss. They were scheduled before Judge Gay last week. Um, there was an amended complaint filed by the plaintiff and asked for additional time. Um, and we are confident in our motions to dismiss that the county would be removed from the lawsuit as uh, the only thing that you have done as a Board of County Commissioners over the last four years has developed a park committee 
and explored, and I think you had over 12 workshop meetings with Chairman Quinn as the chair of that subcommittee and working with your TDC and the community to develop a plan on how you would improve the 10th Street Park in, within the city of Port St. Joe, both to attract tourism and also enhance the quality of life and, and the park facilities within the county. Um, so that's what the county did. We filed a motion to dismiss based on the fact that the majority of the complaint was against the city for what it wanted to do or did not do with that land. The only thing the county had done was pledged the TDC fifth cent towards assisting them in funding that improvement. Um, so we had followed statute 125, which is your TDC statute for the taxes. Um, you recall just recently you did not, you rolled over another five years on your fifth cent. So it'll now go for 10 years. Um, and you continue to collect that tourism development penny, that fifth penny, if you will, specifically for parks and recreation in Gulf County. Um, and you had voted a uh, year before last to pledge that fifth penny and a portion of it towards the improvement of this park. Um, and you continue to do so. You just acquired the golf course. Um, you, you continue to use that penny for parks and recreation, which is all within the statute. We had filed the motion to dismiss saying that, it, in fact, you did exactly that. We provided the facts that you have voted to do that, and you'll continue to do that. Paragraph three reads as follows. The county shall abide by chapter 125 and its use of the TDC fifth penny tax funds. That's it. So the county dismissed with prejudice. You have obeyed, you have abided by the law. You'll continue to abide by the law and this lawsuit will be dismissed against the county. Um, I just need a vote of the commission uh, to authorize the chairman uh, and myself to execute the stipulation for dismissal, submit it to Judge Gay and have this lawsuit removed from the court system. All right, thank you, sir. All right, I entertain a motion. So move for the motion. All right, motion by Commissioner McDane, second by Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion on this? All right, anyone in the public on this? Uh, Commissioner Rich. Commissioner Rich. Anyone in the public on this? Mr. 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 We, can Mr. Branch come up and talk about this? He, uh, he wants I, to come. I, absolutely. Uh, Yes, you can. You're going to take a formal action. You can certainly talk okay. about it. Okay. All right. Come on up, Mr. Branch. State your name, who you represent, for the record. <coughs> Robert Branch, 1016 Marvin. Being yeah. the lawsuit is still, still rolling. The lawsuit is not over. Mr. Branch, may I, just before you go, just one thing, Mr. Chairman, I think it's important. Mr. Branch is represented by Mr. Mike Dickey, Dunlap Shepard. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually signed up. Pardon me for my... Uh, oh, just let me finish. I'm, I'm freeze, freeze this time Just, just let me run. Just okay. let me finish. Freeze this time. So the commission needs to understand you have pending active litigation, okay? And I advise you all as my clients when we have litigation, whether it's advisable to comment on litigation or whether it's not. This morning I introduced a stipulation of dismissal, and what I'm simply offering you as a preface to what comments you'll receive is, is, and Robert knows this, he's represented by an attorney, so... And I don't, I don't represent Robert and Mr. Dickey, and I did not know Robert's going to speak to it. So whatever he offers to you all, I just want Robert to know that he is represented by an attorney. So you all can certainly listen under your speaking ordinance, which is county law, to allow him three minutes. Okay. I actually, in regards to y'all, uh, I'm actually not up here to speak about the lawsuit. The lawsuit is pending. If I was up here to speak about the hold lawsuit. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, start his time. All right. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Pause this time real quick. You say you're not up. If you, if, Actually, hold up, hold up, let, 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 hold let, up, Mr. Brandt. Okay, let me say, okay. let me say something. Are you coming up here to talk about what Mr. Mr. Novak just discussed? Actually, uh, I signed up for the golf okay, course. Okay, well then we're not to that point but, yet. But at the same time, listen, Mr. Brandt. Y'all speak Mr. of Branch. the golf course. Y'all speak of everything. We're not talking about the golf it's course right now. Y'all can throw. Mr. Okay, that, that's Branch. all I need to say. Have that's a seat. Just have say. a seat, Mr. Okay. Brandt, until we get to the end. If you're not talking about what Mr. Novak talked about, then you, you shouldn't even be up here, Mr. Branch. Okay, I apologize. I'd like to say, okay. That's all I'm saying. If, I mean, if you were going to come talk about what he talked about, then yes. But if you're going to talk about the golf course, we're not talking about the golf course right now. At the end, you signed up for the golf course, you can talk about the golf course at the I'll, end. Uh, That's all I'm saying. Talk at the end. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, if there is no other public comment on that okay. action, authorize you and the county to move forward on the stipulation. Right, I'm sorry about that. All right, anybody else in the public on this issue? Anybody else? All right, any opposition to the motion? Motion passes five right, minutes. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to offer one. Now that you just adopted that, um, we'll contact the plaintiff's attorney. We'll get that executed, provide that to them, as well as the city's attorneys. And I just want to thank the commission for your time and attention individually, the administrative staff and the TDC. Uh, 
like I said, on these lawsuits, it takes a lot of time away from other projects, and I thank you each for putting the time in and understanding the issues. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Yeager? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, yes. board members. Just a couple of things, uh, basically, for more uh, information than anything else. I want to talk a little bit about the beach restoration project. As you all know, they're, they're, uh, I've talked to you, most of you individually. They're uh, mobilizing to the site uh, this week as we speak. Hopefully that storm out there in the, in the Atlantic does not hinder that uh, mobilization. Um, we still are on go for uh, pumping sand by the second week in September. So hopefully that project will, will get on get started and, and get completed uh, within 45 to 60 days. You've approved in your consent agenda uh, uh, the change order for $2 million in 15 days. That was all for the state of Florida and, and the um, work that's going to be done in the state park. So that's just an update. Hopefully we're still on go. Um, I want to speak real quickly about Salinas Park Bayside. Uh, as you all know, there's a lot of dead trees all through Salinas Park. I've worked with DEP on specifically the Bayside area that they have purchased and are developing that park for us. I'm going to meet them down there this afternoon. They're going to, they're, they're, they've committed to cut the trees in that new section so we can get that taken care of to make sure none of those dead trees fall on the uh, um, improvements to that particular park. Um, we still need to work on how do we get rid of the rest of those dead trees, and we're working on that, trying to figure out a way um, uh, to get that done. Uh, Dead Lakes, we're still working on a contract for Dead Lakes Park. Um, wanted to, uh, uh, Mr. Rich asked me to bring up uh, Lower Landing, where we're out on that. We're, we uh, went through this process. We've got the application to uh, Treasury. Uh, Treasury and our consultant are working on different things and different aspects of that. Uh, we, we hope to have that all completed before the end of the year and uh, we'll have that acquired and you won't you'll no longer have to lease that landing you'll actually own that landing hopefully in the near future so that's where we're at on that all right, any, if you. there's any questions I'll any questions for mr Hager? all right thank you sir all right Ms. Ms. summers oh, thank you. All right, mr collinsworth <coughs> solar yes sir there you go thank you Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I've, I've got two things. Uh, one's uh, I've got a resignation letter for drop from an employee, uh, Ms. Sonia Yvette Brown, a uh, farmer. Um, she is going to the drop starting September 30th, and uh, her last day will be uh, September 30th, 2024. So uh, if you'll... Uh, uh, give me a, a motion vote and accept that, okay. and I'll send that to the state. All right, I entertain a motion. So moved. All right, motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. Uh, any further board discussion on this? Anyone in public on this? Anyone in the public? All right, any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5 0. No. Uh, the second thing I've got um, <clears throat> your tower. Uh, back behind, back here, uh, behind the courthouse. Um, been working with the insurance company uh, for several months now uh, to come to some type of re resolution on getting funding on that thing. Uh, there's there's some structural issues we believe. Um, we're we're hearing that from the engineers from the company that actually uh, own or put that tower. Or, or the the brand of that tower, where we can't put uh, items uh, on that tower over a certain footage. Now, um, what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, allow us to do a RFP to go out for bid and uh, request for someone to take down that tower. Um, what I'm going to do is send those bids to the insurance company and see if we can collect that way. And condemn that thing. So, uh, if you'll allow me to do that, um, we can move forward in that that manner. Okay. All right. We need a, we need a motion for that. <coughs> so know that. Yes, all right. Thanks, so move. So move. Motion by Second. Commissioner McDane. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on this? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You Thank have you, the floor. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Lowry. 
thank you all you've been doing working through these insurance uh, claims. Now, as soon as we, it's my understanding, and uh, I'll mention it here in a little bit, but it's my understanding we have the pad poured for, we're going to move our antennas out to a Duke power. Exactly. Exactly. Then that'll come down. So that's our plan to have it lined up. So as soon as we relocate our antennas to the new tower, we'll call it the new tower. Right. And well, then we can, then we're going, we need to get it down. It's dangerous. Yeah, we definitely do nothing before then. Um, and okay. definitely I'd get your approval. All right. We'll um, work with the uh, EOC over there on, you know, and with the Sheriff's Department and getting that tower operational. And then we'll worry about the one on the north end after we get this and get this headache out of our hair. Okay? okay. We'll do. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Any, any more board, board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? Towers, anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to that motion? All right. Motion passes 5 and 0. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, Ms. Heron. Yes, sir. I have two items. Um, the first is our ship annual report um, is due, I believe, by September 15th. So I'm just requesting um, permission that uh, after review that I believe the chairman will have to sign that report. So we're just asking permission for um, I will go through and do a full OMB financial review prior to having you sign. Okay. All right. I entertain, a, I entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion by Commissioner Rogers. <coughs> Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any f uh, further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right, any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5-0. Uh, the second item uh, is with our uh, FEMA match waiver application. Uh, we are finalizing that and uh, the just request permission we have uh, pages for both uh, the administrator and the chairman to sign. So we just request permission for y'all to sign those once we have those finalized, hopefully today. Okay. All right. I entertain a motion on that. So, so move. Second. All right. Motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any fo uh, further board discussion on this FEMA match waiver? All right. Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. You said? Oh, slightly important. Very, very important. <laughs> All right. Any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Ms. Herring, you still got the floor? Good. You finished? All right. Mr. Cock? All right. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. In the days following October the 10th, there was a need for some vehicles because some of our vehicles had gotten in the storm, salt water, or whatever. Friends of ours in Clay County donated four vehicles to this county. I don't know if you're even aware. There was three 2003 models and one 2005 model Ford pickup trucks that they, free of charge, donated to this county. Uh, I didn't realize it, but as the clerk pointed out, the policy that we have in the county is that donated vehicles or equipment must be accepted by the board in an open meeting. So we're coming to you now that you would accept these vehicles. They're all four in working condition. We're using all four of them every day. The building department ended up with one of them, TDC has one of them, and Public Works has two. So it was a it was a fine gesture on Clay County's part to send us four vehicles. We got them in the weeks following the storm and been using them ever since. Okay. Right. So would, it's my recommendation that the board would accept the, donate, the donation of these four trucks to the Gulf County. All right. Thank you, sir. Motion, Mr. Chairman. All right. Motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Thank Rogers. You. Any uh, further board discussion on this? Uh, could we send a thank you to Clay County? Absolutely. Yep. 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 That's fine Thanks. with me. Yes. All right. Any more board discussion on this? All right. Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to that motion? Motion passes five. No? That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thanks, sir. Mr. Horton. Good morning. In <laughs> last month's meeting, I requested permission to advertise to receive sealed bids for adult sides. We got those bids in, opened them up yesterday, and it is my recommendation that we award the bid to Univar. All right, I, I, I entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion by Commissioner Rogers. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further board discussion on this? Question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Horton, have we done business with this company? 
Yes, sir. That's yeah. who we bought from last year. Okay. Uh, and it's sort of a package deal. Whenever we purchase chemical from them, they'll come down during the off season and um, do our droplet analysis, which basically calculates the size of the droplets down to within the micron. Um, so that's a free service and added bonus that we get by doing business with them as well. All right. Well, you're going to have a very active mosquito problem. Yes, Are you sir. ready for it? Gearing up. Yes, sir. They are already bad. Hey, uh, <laughs> they almost told me out in the garage yesterday, man. <laughs> and I get it at my home, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you carry this motion, can he explain that? Because the average person does not understand that, and I don't understand either to the micro. But, 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 but I wanted to explain that no matter what the speed of the vehicle, how, yeah. how, how the spray works when, when you get through carrying this, if you, if you would. Because we get a lot of calls about the spray truck going 50 miles an hour. All right. You, you got something, Mr. Rogers? Thank you. All right, I'm going to carry it, and then we're going to come back to you, all right? Sure. Yeah. Okay, all right. Any, uh, anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right, any opposition to that motion? <coughs> motion passes 5 and 0. Oh, you got the floor, Mr. Horton. Okay, our machines are what we call variable flow rate. So they're set up to where they'll only spray if we're going between 2 and 22 miles an hour. Our office a lot of times gets calls. Spray truck came by last night, they were going 35. Well, we know that that's not true because they don't spray at 35 miles an hour, they cut off at 22. Um, if you're going two miles an hour, it meters the amount of chemical down to where it's the same amount per acre that you're putting out if you were going 22. Okay. Um, so that's what we mean by variable flow. And regardless of speed, then you're, you're still getting the same amount of chemical that's being dispensed from the sprayer. And also, we have GPS tracking on all of exactly. our Exactly. That's right. Yes, sir. So you can tell exactly when they were there, mm -hmm. where they were, how much and how much they sprayed. That's right. So it's, it's real easy when we get calls that they didn't come by my house or they did, that, that he can go back and call now. Okay. So okay. all of our vehicles are equipped with that. All right. Thank you, Mr. All right. Circle around by my house a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. All right, Miss uh, Miss Miss Rhodes, Miss Casey, she got it. You got anything? I just have one thing today. It's okay. in regards to the Eastern Shipbuilding uh, grant. Um, they would like to do an underwater inspection of the seawall to determine the condition and the repairs um, are that are needed. So we received a proposal um, for Dewberry to coordinate with a company um, named Dive Tech um, and the amount of $10,815 is their proposal. Wow. Okay. So I would need your approval. All right, I entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Okay, so is this being paid out of the? Yes, it's being paid out of the grant. Grant, okay. 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 Any further board? Yes, sir. Uh, my understanding is the city is going to do a study on their portion of that wall too. I wonder if that might be. I know it paid different. I understand that. Okay. But, uh, this is just in cover. regards to the grant. Okay. So that might be something different. Right. Well, I'll see that they coordinate. Same same engineer. Yeah. Different project. But okay. Thank right you. next door, it would seem like they'd save money if they do it at the same time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any further board discussion? All right, anyone in the public? Anyone in the public on this? All right, any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passes 5 and 0. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Casey, yes. while you're up there, if you could give them an update. I know you and Mark and, and uh, different ones have been working on this. We've got a, a positive zero match $100,000 grant, and uh, I know that they've been pulling their hair out for the last couple of days because there's a quick timeline. Just give them a little update on that. Um, we received um, a grant opportunity for a zero match if it were under $100,000. So um, Mark and Austin and Sherry and I have been working on a grant um, that was submitted this past Thursday um, to do ditch repair works for all of the issues that we've been having due to the rain and the debris that's stuck in the ditches. Um, and we submitted that on 
Thursday, and it was in your um, consent agenda to ratify that application. Okay. Um, Mark, do you want to? It is, it's no match, so it's essentially just free money if we can show out what we're going to do with it. We've laid out, we, we went very extensively through some topo maps and found ditches that would qualify that, that we wouldn't ordinarily have access to clean. They're not county ditches, but they come off of county roads and drain county roads. Those people in Pleasure Rest area understand what I'm talking about. It was the road was underwater for over a mile, and so it's, it's very needed, and the money that we'd get from this would facilitate helping us to be able to do it. That's good. It was on my list later, but while we're talking about it, we, uh, and again, we still haven't met with the Secretary Moskowitz, uh, talked with Senator Mumford again last night, and he's trying to set that up. He'd been out of town. <clears throat> we have a, been awarded, fortunately and unfortunately, a five plus million dollar NRCS grant to clean ditches, but we have to put up a million five that we don't have to get that grant. So that's going to be one of our asks. It is a federal grant. Uh, it can't be matched by FEMA. We're hoping that it can be matched by the state, and if not the state, then a, a state agency like Water Management. But to clean up Simmons Bow and St. Joe Bay and the river system and we Weetapo Creek that we're not handling on this one, we have problems all over the county with, with trees down. Most, most of the problem is on property that we do not own or have easements to. It's old St. Joe property, it's Deseret property, it is state or federal property, uh, but, but we have a countywide problem with debris, specifically trees, but we also have vehicles, we also have houses in Island View and, and at Simmons Bow, so that will go a long way to cleaning that up, but again, we don't have the match to, to do that at the time, so we're working on that. This is a zero match, so we're going to take the 100 and do what we can with that, but we need lots more. So that's just an update on that, Grant. While we while we talking about that, I was going to ask this question um, when I when I was come to the board <coughs> business. But is there any grants out there for for basically like cleaning up community, like like the trash and start back piling up everywhere? I mean, in every district, I'm pretty sure, and it ain't being picked up no more. So I mean, is the grants out there that we might can apply for to start back? I'm not aware of off the top of my head. We are meeting with our. Uh, consultant on the uh, CDBG DR, uh, which very likely could include some of that. The only problem is that money's not going to flow for quite a while. Uh, we're meeting the first week of next month, some what, Thursday? Next Thursday. Uh, but but I'll, I will ask him if, if there's something out there he should know about it. But uh, a lot of this is just people not doing the right thing, right. And, and, and they know better. So we got code enforcement on some. Now we've been picking up the stuff that we can't identify, but a lot of it's just illegal dumping. Right. And uh, but we w we will ask, Mr. Okay. Chairman. All right. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, just to add to that, I just wanted to you know, reassure you. Even though it is time consuming, we are seeing a lot of new grant opportunities, things that we have either did not exist before or we haven't dealt with before and we are trying to make sure that nothing slips through the crack. If it comes in an email or someone forwards it or whatever, we are checking it out and seeing if they're in, even if it's something that we're not aware of, we're running it through the appropriate chains of command to see if there is a project out there that we need to look into. The big thing with all opportunities is match, of course, because our funds are extremely limited. But we. We're not turning any of them away without reviewing them and seeing what we're eligible for and what opportunities we can pursue. All right, yeah, we really appreciate you guys going out there. Um, so every dollar we can get, we really appreciate it. And like I said, hopefully the state will help us out. And the federal government some of waive some of these matches. But cross our cross our fingers. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Casey. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Goblin, you got anything? Good 
morning, commissioners. Um, this is just a quick one-sheeter uh, research survey that was uh, paid for by Visit Florida. Um, it's something that we normally don't have the budget to pay for, but it gives us a baseline of economic impact for Gulf County alone. So I'm not going to go over the whole thing. You can go over it, but it's some great information just to have in your back pocket if you're having any conversations. And a couple of uh, important things to note. 30% um, of total Gulf County jobs are supported by visitor spending, so that's a great number, a huge number. And you can see total visitor spending for 2017 was $136 million just for Gulf County alone. And you can look down at the bottom and see that kind of breakdown. Um, tourism generated taxes was 26 million for state and local um, taxes and then 19 for federal. So take a look and look through these. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Some great information to have. And then another thing I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of and that the public is aware of is that we, a couple of weeks ago, installed a Moby mat at the St. Joe Beach 386 access, which is an ADA accessible um, beach access for wheelchairs, strollers, that kind of thing. And our board is very enthusiastic about doing some more of these. Thank you, Mr. Jimmy, for working um, on it with us. And we'd like to add this more into our long-term plans, and we're going to meet Billy and I are going to meet with Casey this afternoon to see if there are some grant opportunities um, and to build it into our long-term budget. Okay. So please let everybody know. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right, Mr. Whitfield. Uh, you've got a list there with you. Uh, our collections for June was 90,844.59, uh, which is back to our normal. Uh, as of August uh, 1st, we're still about $100,784 less than we was this time last year. Most of this we can contribute to Hurricane Michael due to lost runs and revenue. Uh, and looking like if everything goes the way it's going now on the average, uh, our budget's going to be 315600 uh, shy, which is about $100,000 more than what it was last year. So Hurricane Michael will work on this a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, next item I have, do y'all have any questions on that? Uh, next item I have is we have a contract with NCS Plus, which is our third-party builder. Uh, it costs $11 per claim that they make for us. This is uh, a collection agency that responds once our billing company uh, bills the patient that's not settled within 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing they charge is $11 per claim. Uh, I'd like to get y'all's approval to go ahead and renew it and buy another $1,000 worth of claim tickets, which would be $11,000. Our return in the past has been about 600% of what we put in it. Okay. So it's a good deal. Okay. All right. Well, I understand the motion we move forward. NCIS Plus renew that. So moved. All right. Motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second. Second by Commissioner yes. Rich. Any further board discussion on this? All right. Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? Any opposition to that motion? All right. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you, sir. All right, and the other thing, we do have a new ambulance at our station now. That's good. It's stopped and ready. We're just waiting on a state permit. Okay. All right, that's good. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Jim McKnight, tell us some good news. <laughs> well, we, we do have good news. Yes, um, first of all, the Unmanned Safety Institute has actually located their business at Gulf Franklin Center. Uh, that's the... Uh, organization that has all the training uh, for the drone training and unmanned programs in the state of Florida. They physically are there. Uh, they will begin their training programs in Gulf and Franklin County. Uh, uh, Franklin County actually has 40 students also. So uh, this is becoming a uh, part of our, our coast over here and, and then having another business in town that collaborates with our folks is a, is a good thing. Um, Skyborne uh, project continues to move. Uh, uh, as you know, we've Really, these guys have just come to our community and spent money, and we really have not done a, a lot for them. Um, I have come across a, a grant with the Economic Development Administration that they may be eligible for. We may be able to help them with their hangar that they need to, to build out there at the airport. 
Uh, we have a meeting on that Thursday. It looks pretty positive that in some way we can help them. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll fund the whole hangar, but uh, that's that's the next step in there, being able to uh, continue to outfit their airships and then deploy the drones and that thing. A uh, lot of collaboration going on between <coughs> Skyborne, this new entity, Unmanned, Sis uh, Unmanned Safety Institute, and another uh, drone folks, Unmanned, Safe uh, Unmanned Systems, Inc., uh, along with Gulf Coast Tech College. So you'll probably be seeing uh, some stuff uh, before you. Some will be some Triumph, uh, just support of Triumph Ask. Others will be other grant programs uh, to begin to flesh all that all those programs out, but we really are, there's just a lot of movement on things, yeah. nothing, not real hardcore, but there are jobs already. I mean, the, the Unmanned Safety Institute, their person that coordinates that program has moved here and we'll be having people. And soon some of the Gulf Coast uh, College folks will be hiring people that we move in in our area. Uh, all those are, are, are high paying jobs. So uh, that, that's good for the, uh, the area. Um, the big project uh, that you know, we continue to work on, the biofuel, uh, project we just uh, we've had to go back we had to go back and restructure that thing about a month ago uh, everything's been real positive we don't have an announcement but we've we now have involved uh, another uh, fortune 500 company in that process which makes it a stronger proposal so uh, but again we're still in that stage of uh, negotiating all the deal but it, it, it's moving forward uh, and, and headed the right direction so we should uh, be coming back to you within the next certainly the next 60 days maybe next next time you meet uh, and just a workforce thing, I was really interested in, I know you, uh, the, you saw the, um, the welding grant the school system got. They have 50 students in, at Port St. Joe High School in the welding program, and we were Hitchcock High School has six classes running every day. So with Eastern getting ready to come on board, I don't think it could be more timely that we've got an awful lot of students in, the, in, the, in, in class uh, learning the welding skills. Any questions? Right, any questions from Mr. Minlight? We, we cannot stress enough this big project. And when he says big project, we're talking really, really big. Uh, and, and Jim gives me a percentage every now and then, so he's got up to the end of the 80 plus percent range now. This board will be an integral part of that because it will be a, another P3 with St. Joe. They're not gonna sell the property. It's gonna be us leasing the property long-term for this, but this is a game changer if this gets pulled across the finish line. and and everybody we're dealing with is legitimate on this project what he said was we have two fortune 500 companies probably two fortune 25 companies yeah if there is such a thing uh mega companies that are that are teaming on this project uh that will be right here behind us if it comes to fruition i could tell you'd be amazed we had a we had a conference call the other day and, and there's the vp of this company the vp of that company and i'm i'm the one coordinating the meeting i just said golly what live in a small town you can still talk to the big guys so anyway we appreciate y'all thank, thank you jim you, sir thank you sir yes i'm gonna get him all right miss roberts miss ronda okay. okay all right you bring it here we'll get them good i get them at the, at the end thank you ma'am all right i miss anybody else i forgot to call on the warden this morning yeah, I, I apologize gonna, I, was, but okay. I was gonna get to him all right all right warden morning Good chair morning. commissioners uh, everything's going as planned as always i know it sounds like a broken record each month i come up here but we are moving forward with the reconstruction right now we're anticipated today getting 78 more inmates and uh, so that puts our population over 500 right now so we're we're slowly moving upward um, the progress on the reconstruction at the annex is going much slower than anticipated just like everybody else is they're having issues with contractors and right now there was, uh, they found as you dig into a project, you, you see what everything, there's hidden problems. Mm. And so uh, they're having to redo a lot of the HVAC system over there at the annex. The annex was the hardest hit of, of our two facilities. That's where we had most of the damage. So now they're in the midst of a change order. As you 
guys know how a change order goes, so you're trying to get that uh, both parties in agreement. And uh, but the anticipation right now is very tentative for the reconstruction to be completed at the annex is at the end of the year. Uh, but we still got a lot to do from an operational standpoint. We still got to get uh, our fence systems, uh, our locking systems, all that <laughs> certified up and operational. When you have these these type systems like this sitting for months and a year at a time, um, you have a lot of problems trying to get them back up and running, which we're getting the new fence systems uh, at the annex as well, at, like we did at the main unit. So. We're in the process of, of trying to develop a plan of action for when the reconstruction is over because we've got a lot of work. The grounds are in horrendous shape because you can't get out there. you got building material everywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are going to need some squads and uh, some excess squads, and I'll be talking to the county about maybe getting some of our squads and, and Mark, you know, when that time comes for two or three days and just kind of blitz it get it mowed and get the grounds back to, to, you know, where it needs to be to our expectations. But um, last week we did have Senator Munford came and toured the facility. He walked around for about three hours. Uh, he's a good friend of the agency. And, and I've been working with Senator Munford ever since I've been a warden at, at Calhoun. And he has always been willing to lend a helping hand to the agency. And so he's got her back. He knows her needs. And the last thing he asked me when before he left, he said, so let me get this right. Staffing is your biggest issue. I said, yes, sir. Uh, and only you guys can address that. We can't. Okay. Right now, our staffing, we're sitting at about 208 vacancies. And the goal of the agency right now is to get one facility open along with the forestry camp down here. And at this point right now, that's about all we can do until staffing gets better. But, right, right. you know, we're in competition with Chick-fil-A. We're in competition with right. Publix. We lost a guy about eight years, you know, to $20 an hour at Publix. We can't compete with that. Right. So um, legislature's got to do what they need to do, and hopefully uh, the governor's going back. Secretary Inch's pay plan, and maybe the legislatures will too. But uh, it's not a problem. It's going to go away soon. And, but staffing is our biggest issue. But if we get up and running right now, you, you're going to be looking at about 1,700 inmates. Okay. That's what we're going to be able to do right now. If we can get our staffing, you look at about 3,000 again. So I know you guys got a census coming up. We're trying to work and do what we can and it is the agency's plan because I've, I've conveyed that to them the importance of that census and, and uh, but sometimes we hit snags in the road that right. that's out of our control right. Right. but uh, just kind of I know I'm running time if I need to stop just let me know but I just kind of wanted to give you guys because I haven't done it since I've been here an overview of what the community work squads do I know y'all understand the value but the public doesn't, and the community doesn't quite uh, understand the impact that what these community work squads do. Hold on, right down one second. So moved to extend the time. Right, got a motion by check. Commissioner McDaniel, second okay. by Commissioner McCall. Any opposition? Motion passes 5 no. Thank you. Um, Give him five more minutes. Just for instance, just for the month of July 2019, uh, the agency provided 12,200 man hours which equates to $206,547. That's uh, cost savings to the citizens of Gulf County. So we understand the importance of, of these work squads. We have them going out in St. Joe, we Wahitchka. Uh, we also have four squads going to Bay County. So the total for Gulf County and Bay County, what these squads are doing or these rural communities like us uh, is right at $260,000 just for the month of July alone. Uh, 
we also help not only the county, but we also help the school, which in turn. Um, in May, we had 24 hours up there helping cut the grass. In June, we had another 24 hours, but in July, we amped it up and uh, we had 384 hours, which equates to about $6,500 cost saving to the school and the manpower. And so we did a lot of grass cutting. The majority of what we were doing at the schools were, were painting. We had approximately about 354 hours of just painting, going up there and help painting murals because we've got inmates that are really gifted and uh, that are artists and they paint murals up on the, on the wall and are in the hallways and uh, they do a lot of painting of the classroom, the offices. So uh, just kind of wanted to let the, the community know what these work squads do and the impact that it actually has on their community as a whole. But everything's going well. Good. So. Good. Thank you, sir. Any questions for, for the Please, Yes, sir. Uh, Warden, thank you and your staff for taking time to come this morning. But just for the record, anything, your bridge out there, Mr. Carthen over here, it has a high priority. And we're going to get that little problem addressed and we're working on the bypass we're going to have to bypass it but it does have a high priority when it comes to this paving and hopefully we can get you here very shortly yes hopefully sir we, can. we understand we're on the list and we thank you again yes sir for everything you do thank you mr chairman all right sir thank any you. more questions yes sir. if you reach out sometime i meant to call you yesterday we'll talk about that fire department building okay and what y'all want to do about, with it oh yeah all right I've got I've got work. Okay. okay thank okay. you sir Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Warden. Mm -hmm. I apologize to you. Cap, you got anything? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. All right. It ends uh, county staff business, uh, board business. All right. Who wants to go first? Mr. McDaniel, you want to go first? I will. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just information. We've had a lot of rain. I get a lot of calls along with these other commissioners. But the only way you can get water to go up here, you got to put it in a pipe and pressurize it or vacuum it. It will not run up here. We've got a lot of areas that's built in low-lying areas, and the water's standing there. And you just have to bear with us. We, and we'll get through with this. I know Mr. Horton over here, I've talked to him a couple of weeks ago, and I told him, I said, you better order extra spray and we may be spraying extra hours, but we're going to we're going to have a war on our hands here very shortly with this <laughs> mosquito uh, uh, situation. But uh, other than that, we're working to the people. We, we're coming along, and uh, everybody says, "Well, what's this hold up?" Well, there's all kind of little hold up, you know. Everybody can do it better than you can. Well, till it gets to doing it, and then they they got to walk in your shoes, and realize there are things you have to follow. You have to follow the rules. You have to follow the regulations and, and do's and don'ts. But other than that, I think we're coming along we're just about coming up on a year of 10, 11. It was a terrible time for Gup County. But we're, we're a lot further along today. Go to Bay County. They're still, I don't see, they probably got another year over in that Parker uh, Callaway area. I'm, I'm looking at a year over there before they even get dug out. We're in good. I rode the whole county. And again, we just got a few little old spots, and we're going to go around. Uh, had the opportunity yesterday with our uh, code enforcement. He came up to we were and he and I rode around to a lot of areas and looking. And, and we will, uh, the county is going to have to probably go in there and pick up some of this debris is in La La Land. It's between my house and your house. It's not mine, it's not yours, but it's somebody who just stopped and threw a mattress out mm -hmm. on the side of the road. And uh, with the warden with our inmate crews, the one I have in my district, the county crew. Uh, I've instructed them in, in our area. If they see any tires or anything and there's room on their truck, on their trailer, throw it on there. Go ahead and pick it up. Don't let a tire just lay there in the ditch. You go on and get it. And we've got a central location where in District 2 we're stockpiling this where the, when we come to pick it up, the truck don't have to ride all over the district. You can pull up that one place, pick it up, and that's it. But we're coming along, and I appreciate the patience of people 
have, have shown us and all, but we're going to get there. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the time. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rogers? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. All thank right. you. Mr. Rich? I'm good. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I got a couple of things. Uh, first, I'd like to, uh, if I could, bring up uh, Chief Bishop and uh, Assistant Chief Barrett. That they did some training, uh, open uh, water rescue training okay. In, okay. in Bay County. I'd just like to get them to tell us about the training and what they've been up to. Chief, if y'all could state your name and who you represent for the record, please. Uh, Vince Bishop, Chief, South Gulf County Volunteer Fire Department. Mike Barrett, uh, Deputy Fire Chief, Thank South Gulf Fire Rescue. Thank you, guys. Go ahead, Mike. You can. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to the commissioners in the county for all the support that y'all give us out there. It's uh, it's very comforting to know that y'all have our back. Um, one of the things that Chief Bishop uh, tasked me with was to <laughs> squeeze a dollar fifty out of a dollar, <laughs> uh, budget-wise, and so what I did is uh, I started contacting different uh, fire departments in Gulf and in Bay County to see what training they had and what we were um, able to go and and train with them. Um, Tyndall Air Force Base Fire Department and Panama City Fire Department has graciously opened their doors to us to come and train with them. Um, Chief Bishop and I have trained once with Tyndall Air Force Base last year. I just recently went to a class at Tyndall. Um, a couple weeks ago, we went to Panama City uh, and water trained with their water crew. Every year, Panama City Fire Department, everybody in there is required to be part of their water rescue team. And so they, every August, go and train. And we were able to go this year and interact our people with their people and train. Um, and this is an open door uh, invitation for us to train with them, not only in, in water uh, operations, but EMS, first responder, <laughs> fire suppression. So we've, we've nurtured a relationship with several different departments to where all it is costing us is a tank full of fuel to drive over there and our great volunteers to give give of their time. That's good. If I might add, have they, haven't they made this available to the other departments in the county? Yes, yeah, it's available to everybody. That's good. And I have started putting the word out to let everybody know that um, I've got contact information, anybody in, uh, in Gulf County, any of the departments are more than welcome. I'll get you in touch with the people you need to get in touch with. And, uh, you know, our water training was conducted by one of their fire captains who's a trained water rescue instructor, and he's also a scuba diver, and he is part of their dive rescue team. So there's a lot of good professional um, training out there that's available to us. Yes, sir. All right. That's it. Thank you, guys. Really good, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. You got I it. just want to thank uh, Mike, you and Vance. Y'all have done a great job. And and uh, down the road, I know I spoke to Tim Wood about the beach patrol uh, getting in on some of that water rescue training, if that's possible. So we could. We'd be glad to. Yeah. Yeah. The only other thing I want to say is I, Chief's the shy one of the two of us, believe that or not. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman. Ch Ch I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. The Ch Chief Bishop is the reason that we're operating at the level that we're uh, operating at. Yes. He has uh, given us, you know, he's tasked certain people in our department to go and do what we can to, to bring up the level of service. And so everything that we do, um, good and bad, <laughs> comes back to this guy here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. But this guy does yeah. all the groundwork. Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, hold on a second. Go, yeah. go ahead, go Mr. Ahead. Mr. Whitfield. Thanks for all the backup they give us. Okay. We couldn't do it without that. That's good. All right, Mr. McDaniel, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, people don't know a lot, but let me tell you, good people. South Gulf, the beaches, they have really helped the north end of the county. I mean, if. If they got two and we don't have any, they'll give us one of their, their two. But uh, 
Mike and Chief Bishop, we appreciate yes. all that you do for our little old apartments up there. They don't have a lot of money to operate in because of it, but they're very important to our community. We all work as one up there. I think we've got three <coughs> county departments and one, yeah, yeah, three counties and one city, and we all work in unison just like you. But thank you so much for what you and the beaches contribute to us. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. You got the floor? Yeah, the other thing I have, Mr. Chairman, is uh, um, I know after the hurricane we came into, you know, different times and uh, just want to try to get a handle on what's going on as far as accessory structures, you know, on, on lights and uh, I guess pole barn stuff like that. But I would like this morning to uh, uh, put in the form of a motion that we uh, put a moratorium on any anything other than a primary structure on a lot. You have to have a primary structure to have an accessory building or anything else on that lot. And I want to put that in the form of a motion in the tourist corridor. So in the, so in the tourist corridor. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So we got a motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second his motion. All right. Second by Commissioner McDane. Any further board discussion on this? Any discussion? And, and yes, and that puts a moratorium on anything besides you have to have that primary structure. Michael, is that right? what we were talking about? Oh, uh, and I think if we could get the board to to tell us what you mean by the tourist corridor, if 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 we want to follow the same open water that we did prior, that would include the beaches and Beacon Hill, that would not include Windmark in the city, of course. It would not include Jones Homestead and Simmons Bow, but it would include the Cape and Indian Pass. Is that what we still want to follow, the CCCL line and the open water, but not the bay? Yeah, at this time, and I, and I guess put a moratorium on that and until we can get this figured out, you know, what, where we're going to go with this. And uh, I guess just put this moratorium on in the t meantime until we can. Okay. Okay. And you want staff to come back with a recommendation? Yes. yes. On an on an ordinance. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. I understand. All right. So we got a motion by Commissioner McCrone, second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any further board discussion on this? All right. Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to that motion? All right. Motion passes five and zero. Oh. I'll do my best to have you a draft if I can get Jeremy's head with with my hand or vice versa uh by next thursday's meeting okay. special meeting all right you still have the floor sir that's all i have mr chairman thank you all right and uh, the chair already addresses the issue I, I was thinking about was you know trying to find some money so we can help these folks clean start get back to clean up yes sir if i could go ahead and have my second round now already because i've yeah i've <laughs> I had two or three sets of notes. I was running behind trying to get a cup of coffee, and I, I forgot some things. Uh, I'd like, if is he still here, if Matt Terry could come forward. Yes, Matt, uh, I thought I was on a lot of things. Matt was on three county boards. Uh, well, EDC, PDRB. PDRB is probably the most important board the county has, uh, and, the, and the Port Authority. And now he's moving up in the world, and he's going to be our representative <laughs> on the Triumph Board. So I don't know if that's good or bad. I, I, I hope, we'll I hope we out. have a much better relationship <laughs> with them than the, than the entire tribe board in the, in, the, in the past a little bit. But one, we want to thank him for, for his years of service to all those committees. They're, they're a thankless, unpaid job, but they're extremely important to, to let us all get our work done for the community. And just the board wants to thank you. I want to thank you. And then I want to hear your thoughts on going forward. Thank you, Michael. Uh, commissioners, first of all, I want to say it was a privilege to serve on EDC and PDRB for almost seven years, I think. Um, vice chair of both um, to the staff, uh, Lee and uh, uh, Mr. McKnight, thank them as well for um, taking us down a, a pretty tough path sometimes. And I have served with some of y'all as well. Um, moving forward as being a commissioner on Triumph, I, um, I wanna say that I look forward to working with y'all, Gulf County, all the counties, um, we need some good jobs. I mean, I know that it's been repeated over and over again, but hopefully we can have some very good industry move in that 
coexists with our current tourism industry, and um, we can get some some kids back here. I mean, I really want my children to be able to enjoy what I've been able to enjoy for years and years, and I know that y'all feel the same way. Um, I think that we have some good things moving down the pipeline. I had a good conversation with uh, Mr. McKnight, I guess it was last Friday, meeting with a couple prospects, and um, I look forward to, to working with y'all in uh, all capacities. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions for Mr. Tate? Matt, thank you for your time. Yes, thank sir. you very I much. Think you and I served on some boards together. Yes, sir. We did. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it, and it was an honor. Thank, thank you, Matt. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on yeah. that appointment. Thank, yeah. thank you, Matt. Yeah, congratulations. <clears throat> the last thing I, I have at this time, I may have something else <laughs> at, at later. A lot of y'all, I think all of y'all had calls, and we had calls about the, the flooding problems we had uh, in the Pleasant Rest area and Overstreet Road area and whatnot, and I just want to... We, we had some folks that didn't understand, some folks that were out of town that didn't understand, but, but even under the most ideal circumstance, when we have 12 inches of rain in about an eight-hour period, uh, I believe Commissioner Rich told me they had two and a half feet over Sandy Creek on 22, on Highway 22. We had water over half the road on uh, Overstreet Road. We have a major problem on the north side of the Pleasant Rest Road where, where the owner of that huge tract of land has is now dumping his water or their water onto our road in addition. But all that put aside, when we tap Oak Creek is at the top of its banks and overflowing, it was two feet over at the Buddy Floor Bridge, there's nowhere for the water to go. I mean, it'd be no different if the bay were full and the city of Port St. Joe or the canal were full at White City or whatnot. There was nowhere for the water to go. So when we have that much flash flooding, and it's been a long time, but I mean, I remember in like 98, we had flash flooding where houses got flooded when we tap up. And it'll flood in a day and it'll be gone the next day. But I, most <clears throat> folks were patient, but I know you all got a bunch of calls from, from folks that, you know, we were flooding their property and we were flooding their ditches. and. And uh, we were doing the best we can, but when the when the creek is full and overflowing, there's absolutely nothing we can do, but it, irregardless of the of the trees and the debris that are in the ditches. So I don't know if Mark's got anything else to say about that, but that's the I just wanted to put that uh, out. That's all I have this time, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. All right, moving on down to item six, quasi judicial. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Yes, sir. I got a couple items this morning. First, we got a variance request from Chattahoochee Hill Properties, LLC, located at 8127 and 8129 U.S. Highway 98, parcel ID number 03978-002, section 5 and 6, Township 7 South, Range 11 West. They're requesting a 10-foot variance into the 20-foot roadside setback off of U.S. 98. And it was a recommendation 3-0 vote by the PDRB to approve, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this item that Mr. Collinsworth just discussed? If you are here, please step forward. Does anyone have any objections with the, ra with the waiving of the quasi-judicial hearing? Any objection? Anyone in the public has any objection with the waiving of the quasi-judicial hearing? All right, if there being none, I entertain a motion that we waive quasi-judicial. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Second. Crone, second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the public on this? Any opposition? Motion passes 5 and nope. All right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, so I'm Lance Watson, Southeastern Consultant Engineers, and I'm representing Chad and Sonia Casey of Chattahoochee Hill Properties for uh, parcel number, for the, let's see, where are we at here? You got it right here. Seven. Okay, yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. 0397800 r mm -hmm. uh, This no, is a typical. No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's it, okay. okay. Now, this is a 10-foot, a request for a 10-foot front setback due to the DEP uh, build two line. Pushing the uh, proposed structure up, typical along the the Gulf side of Highway 98, St. Joe Beach. Okay. All right, any, uh, y'all got any questions? 
Any questions? Lee, you, we good with this? Yeah, so this is this is one of the properties located on the Gulf side of 98. It's consistent with with the county's DEP pushes them forward before they were permitted as far as they can go, and that's that's one of the sections out there that that the county has allowed that variance to go forward on the roadside. All right, and say the PDRB voted 3-0. 3 to approve, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Novak. Mr. Chairman, um, if Lance has nothing else, there's no other further public comment or questions from the staff, then I'll go through the uh, the uh, template and the uh, approval form with the commission. All right. Is anyone else in the public want to come forth on this issue? All right. Go ahead, Mr. Novak. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the form in front of each of you commissioners, the form you adopted a few years ago with regards to variances, it's consistent with your LDR section 34 um, and 3536, and it, it establishes the grounds on which you'll grant a variance or a hardship relief. Um, it provides you one through four as the grounds on which you can uh, approve it. And then it also provides uh, establishing proper notice, substantial and competent evidence that you reviewed the application and that you also cite sections 35, 36, 37 uh, in either approving, denying, or tabling this variance. Um, as Mr. Collinsworth indicated, it was recommended to you as a commission 3-0 to grant this. Um, and if you want to waive the reading and adopt the planning board's recommendations to you on their form, then the planning department will mirror those votes um, and then submit it for the chairman's signature and the approval of this variance. All right, I entertain a motion if we waive the formal reading. So moved. All right, motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on waiving the formal reading? Uh, any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5-0. All right, Mr. Novak. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I think Mr. Collinsworth has a second one for you on the Wagners. Thank you, Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman. Second, we have a, a variance request. This is actually a seven-unit uh, townhome. Hold up, hold up, sir. We need to we need to approve this, right? We need to approve this before we move on. I'm sorry. Y yes, sir. You have to okay. you, you vote five right. zero to waive the reading and approve the variance. Okay. All yes, right. Sir. Hold on a second. All right. A motion. What, what's the wishes of the board? Move accept. Or? So move, Mr. Chair. Right. So move to accept. Yeah. All right. We got a motion by Commissioner McCone to accept it. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? All right. Any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed five. All right, go ahead, Mr. Collins. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. Um, one of your former colleagues, Commissioner, was in the back of the room, and he used to give you a two-minute speaking limit, okay. and he appeared in that doorway, so I was under a rush. Now I thought I had to go back to those two minutes again, so I apologize. <laughs> but he's now disappeared again, so I'll okay. give it back to Mr. Collins. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Mr. Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Second, we have a variance uh, cluster request. Applicants are, are Richard and Jeannie Wagner, uh, 8171 U.S. Highway 98. Parcel ID number 03805-011R. Jeff and Nancy Woodman, 8173 U.S. Highway 98, parcel 03805-012. Kyle, LLC, 8175 U.S. Highway 98, parcel 03805-013R. Van Anthony and Judith Schaefer, 8177 U.S. 98, parcel ID 03805-014. Warren A. Thompson, 8179 U.S. Highway 98, parcel number 03801015. Jack and Z.B. Schmidt, 8181 U.S. 98, 03805016R. And VW Investments, LLC, 8183 U.S. 98, parcel 03805017R. All located in Section 31, Township 6 South, Range 11 West, requesting a 10-foot variance into the 20-foot roadside setback off of 98, and uh, the far west unit, 03805-017, is a three-foot setback into the side setback on the west side, which is abuts a county walkway, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And it was a vote of 3-0 by the PDRB to accept. All right. Uh, is anyone here who wishes to uh, speak on this item? Please step forward.
<clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. Tyler Marsh, Southeastern Consulting Engineers. I'm here to represent the Seashore Town Home Units. As uh, Mr. Collinsworth said, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I think Mr. Novak didn't throw me off. All right, hold, hold on for you for you step. Does, <laughs> does, all right, does anyone have any issue of, uh, with us waiving the quasi judicial hearing? Anyone have any issue with us waiving the quasi judicial hearing? If there being no issue, I entertain a motion that we waive the quasi judicial so hearing. So moved to waive. All right, motion Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any uh, further board discussion? Anyone in the public on this? All right. Any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 4 and 0. All right. Now go ahead and state your name who you represent, you. please. Tyler Morris, Southeastern Consulting Engineers. I'm here to represent the uh, Seashore Town Home Units. As Mr. Collinsworth had said, there's currently seven units um, all along Highway 98 on the Gulf side there in St. Joe Beach. Each unit's requesting a 10-foot roadside setback. Um, it's pretty typical throughout this area due to the CCCL line and the line of construction uh, that DEP establishes. Mm -hmm. um, the unit number uh, seven on the far west that borders the county property would like to also request a three-foot west property line uh, variance, uh, setback variance there in addition to their front setback request. All right, Mr. Mr. Collinsworth, PDRB. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The PDRB recommended 3-0 to approve, and these units are seven going to six in order for them to be able to meet the other setbacks on the other side, which is private property. The only other one is going to be variance would be the one on the west side, which abuts county property. Uh, so it does not set a precedent of us giving a side variance setback to that abuts private property. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, any questions, um, board members? Any questions? All right. Mr. Uh, so PDRB recommend 3 -0. Yes, sir. 3 to approve, Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Novak. Mr. Chairman, if there's no other further public comment or anything from the applicant, if the commission uh, wants to close the public hearing um, and then also consider uh, one waiving over the reading of your template for the adoption and the second vote is accepting the PDRB's recommendations and mirroring your approvals on <coughs> substantial evidence, proper notice, and the hardship relief granted for this variance, um, either to approve, deny, or table the variance. All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else in, in the public would like to speak on this issue? This variance request, anyone else? All right, it's cl closed to the public. I entertain a motion that we weigh the formal reading. So I move, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion by Commissioner Rich. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on waiving? Anyone in the public on waiving the formal reading? All right, any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Go ahead, Mr. Novak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you, you waive the reading, and um, if you want to mirror the PDRB's adoption, okay. um, you entertain a second vote to accept their recommendations. The planning department will prepare it for your signature. All right, what's the wishes of the board? PDRB recommended it. Approved. All right. Second. All right, you, you making that motion, Commissioner yes, Rich? All right. Motion by Commissioner Rich to approve. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any uh, further board discussion on this? All right, anyone in the public on this? Any opposition to that motion? All right, motion passes 5 and 0. Let's take a quick five minute recess, real quick. Quick five minute recess, if you don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. 